Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Gold, joining you on Tuesday. We are getting closer to that big, big match on Thursday night, Arsenal versus Slavia Prague. The first leg of the Europa League quarterfinal. We'll be speaking to Mikel Arteta and a player tomorrow during the usual pre-match press conference. That has been set for 1.30 in the afternoon, so keep an eye out for that. I'll be reporting um, on my uh, social media page, so find me on Twitter and on Facebook as well. And then after all of that, after the press conference is finished, I'll try and pop on here. I think I might try and do a, uh, I'll do a, a live video uh, on here to uh, discuss what he's had to say and answer any questions that you guys may have. So please do look out for that tomorrow afternoon at some time. Um, just wanted to focus mainly today on today's video talking about Gary Neville. Um, I don't know if any of you saw it yesterday. I'm sure plenty of you had or if you hadn't, didn't see it, you've probably read some of the comments from now. Gary Neville has had a big old dig at Arsenal, um, specifically the forward line at Arsenal. I mean, he was doing it in on Monday Night Football yesterday ahead of the um, Wolves-West Ham game, I think it was. Um, him and Jamie Carragher were going over the Arsenal-Liverpool match um, doing their usual excellent analysis. And um, and yeah, they both really went in on Arsenal, Gary Neville especially. And I just wanted to talk about some of those comments. I'll go through them now, um, have, give my sort of opinion on what he's had to say. I don't think some of it is fair. I think some of it is a little bit reactionary, I have to say. But um, uh, but some of it is is equally is, is fair as well. So look, it is some of the bits. I won't go through it all because I think it was about a sort of five-minute clip on, on TV. If you haven't seen it yet, you should go and watch it. I'm sure it's on YouTube, something like that. Um, but here's what it's some of what he said, had to say. He said, I was alarmed. We know Arsenal are inconsistent and in transition under Arteta, but I have to say at halftime on Saturday, I was really uncomfortable by what I saw. Usually at the end of the game, I just leave, but I sat around for a few minutes with Martin Tyler and went, what was that? I was really uncomfortable with what I saw. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but I have to say, I thought there were a few players in the front part of the pitch who looked like a little mafia. Um, it looked like there was a disconnect between them and the manager. The manager looked like he'd had enough of them. We've been around football now for a long time, so we know when players look disinterested. We could be wrong, and next week we could be talking about how great they are. Arsenal generally have got a good game under, a good shape under Mikel Arteta, but what was different was the effort or lack of it from the front th six. And I'm going to say all six, although Martin Odegaard did try at times to press, but the rest of them were a joke. The lack of energy was a joke. Very, very, you know, damning assessment there from um, Gary Neville, look, let's face it, Arsenal was so bad on Saturday night, it's no surprise that um, uh, that it's a damning assessment. But, you know, some really, really brutal um, words there from Neville. And he continues, all the way through the first half, I was watching this and getting frustrated. I think Mikel was shocked by the lack of application from the front part of the team. It was a walk in the park for Liverpool. It was embarrassing. It was a really bad day for Arsenal, a dark moment. I think Mikel Arteta will be coming away from that thinking it's me or them now. Arsenal have got a big problem with some of those players. He can't implement his plan unless those players from Saturday decide they're going to start playing for him or he gets rid of them. And I doubt it would be the first one because something didn't feel right. Um, so, yeah, interesting comments there from Gary Neville. Certainly captured, um, made a lot of headlines, um, which perhaps was, uh, was the point of them. But... What I do think, and I said it at the start, I think it's a little bit reactionary. Um, and look, I mean, Arsenal were dreadful, and I've I've had my say on it. I think it was, it, he was right. It was an embarrassing performance. It absolutely was. But I think, you know, you've got... How do I put this right? right? I just think it's, like I said, a bit reactionary because I don't... If this was something that had gone on for a month or two months now with this Arsenal team, I would agree with him. I'd be getting really worried. That was very much where we were at the end of the Unai Emery era where for about two months it was so clear. The same performances were coming week after week after week um, and you could see the players weren't playing for him. It was just so blatantly obvious. But I think this is different. And where he talks here, you know, about how... Um, he thinks there's a little mafia and disconnect between them and the, and the manager. This where I think it's a little bit unfair because... You know, it was only the game before the international break when this team came back from 3-0 down to draw 3-0. There wasn't a disconnect there. Obviously, they started the game badly, but then they, you know, got themselves up and they scored three goals and earned themselves a draw at a very good West Ham side who are obviously in the top four at the moment. So there wasn't really a disconnect there. The players were certainly playing for something there and showing an awful lot of effort there to haul themselves back in from the dead and get themselves a point out of a game that seemingly had been lost after half an hour. And since Christmas, Arsenal were in, before Saturday's game, they were in the... Um, top four of the form table since Christmas, so um, that's why I, that's what I'm saying. If it was this had been going on consistently for two or three months now, then I think Gary Neville could have a, a very point when he talks about all of this. But I think it just feels like this was 
was a bit of a one-off game for us. We haven't seen a performance like that from Arsenal for a long, long time. You know, this is a team that, like I said, came back from the dead to get a draw out of West Ham. This was a team that hauled themselves back from 2-1 down against Benfica with 25 minutes to go to get themselves through uh, and keep their Europa League dream alive. Yeah, I just don't, you know, they beat beaten Tottenham a couple of weeks ago and didn't stop working, you know, constantly through that game. So I just feel it's a little bit unfair. I felt it was a bit reactionary to go that hard. By all means, you know, have an absolute go at the performance because it was embarrassing. He's right. It was a joke. It was dreadful. There's no excuse. There's no, you can't defend those players for that type of a performance. But I just think what he was saying there felt like something you had to be said if you've seen it for three months consistently, two months consistently, not just on the back of one game, which was a dreadful game when Arsenal were missing four very, very influential players, three, and then obviously Tierney went off in the game. That's still no excuse. It wasn't good enough, um, nor was the international breaking excuse. Again, it wasn't good enough, but I just feel that to go this hard, like Neville said, to start talking about Mafia players not playing for him um, and things like that, it just felt a little bit over the top for me, given what we've seen in recent weeks. The fact they've come back from 3-0 down to get a 3-3 draw, the fact they've turned it around against Benfica to haul themselves through, the fact they've beaten Tottenham. Um, you know, I just it's it didn't really... What he had to say, the, the strength of what he had to say didn't really tick all the boxes for me. Um, and again, I'm sure plenty of you will be saying, oh, you're defending Mikel Arteta. I'm not defending Mikel Arteta. I'm just, this is me just talking about Gary Neville's comments and thinking they were a little bit over the top, a little bit reactionary on the back of one dreadful performance. Look, if this carries on in the next few games, if Arsenal go and put in a similar type of performance against Slavia Prague, and lose that game, and then they go and lose at Sheffield United at the weekend, that's when you certainly start worrying, thinking, hold on, these players have suddenly down tools for whatever reason. Um, but to just do it on the back of one game, I felt against the champions, yes, they're having a bad season, but they are the champions. They are, have been for quite a while now, one of the best teams in world football. And the way they played at the weekend, they can beat anyone, and they would beat almost everyone. They were fantastic. So it just felt a little bit over the top for me from Gary Neville. And um, yeah, I'm not quite as... I'm not quite as worried as he is just yet. I think I've, I want to see. I'd want to see more performances like that um, before I start to think that there's a real disconnect and the manager has lost a changing room. Players aren't playing for him. Players aren't putting the effort in for him. I think I'd need to see a little bit more than just one match against a very good Liverpool team where Arsenal were missing a few, few players and had an absolute shocker of a performance. Uh, yeah, so there's my comments on Gary Neville. Let me know if you agree or don't agree. Put the comments, as always, in the uh, in the comments section. It'll be interesting to see, to get your views on where you stand on that whole debate. Okay, let's talk about injury news. How are we Kieran Tierney? Now, we still haven't had official confirmation from the club about the extent of Tierney's injury. From what a few of us understand, however, is that um, Arsenal are facing up to the prospect of at least being without him for a few weeks. So that is certainly showing that it's not just, it wasn't just a knock. There is something there. They haven't um, had full confirmation yet by all accounts, of what the extent of the injury is. That should come in the next couple of days. There's reports up in Scotland that he will have a scan today. Now, I haven't had that confirmed yet, but that is what's been coming out of people up in Scotland, who are obviously very close to the Tierney camp, is that the scan, he'll be having a scan on that knee today to de determine the exact extent of the damage. Um, and it's just going to be a case of sitting there with fingers crossed. But a word coming out from Arsenal is that they're facing up to the prospect of at least being out without him for a few weeks. And when you think the season is only six weeks, uh, there's only six weeks left in the season, Arsenal could possibly, um, you know, maybe only have Tierney back for a couple of games in the best case scenario, depending on how they get get on in the Europa League. You know, if they get themselves through to the final, then we're about six weeks away from that Europa League final. So it's too early to rule them out for the season just yet. But even if he's out for just a few weeks and you're looking at basically half those remaining games of the season, you're going to have to make do without your first choice left back and arguably, well, actually not even arguably, un absolutely one of your best players in the team who makes a massive difference. So that is going to be a huge, huge blow for Arsenal. Um, and it's going to present Mikel Arteta with um, some really big problems that he has to try and work out how to solve now. And that the biggest problem is how do you replace Kieran Tierney? What do you do with Kieran? Do you just move Cedric over to the left-back role, which we saw him do in the Liverpool game when Tierney got his injury? Um, Cedric does a decent job there, no doubt about it, but he's not a natural left-back. And we've, um, we saw both all of Liverpool's goals in that second half came down Cedric's side. I'm not saying they were all Cedric's fault, far from it. 
Um, there were plenty of errors in there, and um, but it was just understandable that Liverpool had got a lot of joy down that side after Kieran Tierney went off. Um, Cedric is a decent defender. He's played very, very well this season when he's come in, but he's a right back. He's not a left back. You need, want to have le natural left sided cover there. So what could you do if you're Arsenal? The option that sort of really springs out is playing Bakaya Saka, moving him back to left back. We all saw how well he did there last season. Um, it would give you a bit of natural... Um, uh, and a sort of natural look to the side of him playing there. But then obviously that moves him away from playing, moves him away from the front line where he's been so good. He's been excellent on the right-hand side this season. Um, so do you really want to take arguably your best player out of the right side of the forward line and move him into defence? Probably not. Ideally, certainly not. But it is an option and you'd think it would probably make Arsenal a little bit more balanced and you'd want, you'd need someone like... Um, Nicolas Pepe, who Jamie Carragher in that earlier discussion I had with Gary Neville absolutely destroyed Nicolas Pepe yesterday. He's saying he's, it's nothing to do with his age. He's just not good enough and will, and will never be good enough to play for Arsenal. Uh, which I thought was a little bit harsh. He's certainly inconsistent, but on his, on his day he plays very well. Nicolas Pepe, you would need him. If you're going to move Saka, make, take the decision to move Saka and play him at left-back for the rest of the season, then you're going to need Nicolas Pepe to really step up and make his mark on the right-hand side of that forward line. Um, so it's a big decision for Mikel Arteta. It's a big problem. Um, ideally, obviously, you'd want those scan results to come back and suddenly Arsenal get a real unexpected boost and Kieran Tierney's fine and he's back within a week. Doesn't look like that is going to be the case. And I'm not sure any of us are surprised given the look on Tierney's face as he went off against Liverpool. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Mikel Arteta goes for. Is he just going to do the obvious and switch Cedric over to that side and go with a natural right-footed player at left-back for the remainder of the season or for however many weeks Kieran Tierney is out? Or do you make what would be quite a bold choice in moving Saka out of the forward line, play him on the left where he can still have a big impact going forward? We saw it last season with the amount of assists he got from that position. And then put your trust in someone like Nicolas Pepe on the right-hand side of the attack and uh, hope that Saka's absence from that side doesn't become too much of a negative in terms of going forward. So as always, like, as I always say, let me know what you think on that. What do you think Arsenal should do? If Tierney is out for three, four, five, six weeks, who should play at left-back? Should it be Saka or should you just do what he did against Liverpool, move Cedric over to that side and keep Saka in the forward line? Um, right, a little bit more on Lucas Torreira. He's been talking again to the Uruguayan media. Obviously, he came out with those quotes last week talking about uh, his dream to move to Boca Juniors and um, how he wants it to happen, how he hopes Arsenal can make that deal happen. He wants to move back home after the death of his mother to um, be closer to his family. He wants to do it for his father, he says, um, and he wants, he wants Boca to... Uh, come in and get a deal done with Arsenal. Whether that can, will be possible, we'll have to wait and see until the summer. But uh, he's been speaking again. He said, Juan, remember Juan Ramon, uh, Ramon Raquelme, the man who missed the last-minute penalty for Villarreal in Arsenal's Champions League semi-final in 2006? He is... Um, He's the, I think he's sporting director, he's the president now of Boca Juniors, something like that. And he uh, has got in touch with Torreira after that interview. And Lucas said, Raquel may call me off, called me after the interview. I always talk to him. He thanked me for speaking well about the club and sent greetings to my family at this time. And he then went on, I've never considered coming back to Uruguay. It's not an idea that I have. My intention has always been very clear of going to Boca. Uh, now, I've had my say on this before. I think it's going to be a difficult situation, this for Torreira. Yes, his dream is to go to Boca Juniors. Um, yes, it's understandable that he's uh, you know, in a very emotional at the moment, given what's gone on in his family life. But he's still a very big asset to Arsenal. They've spent a lot of money to bring him in from Sampdoria. Um, they can't just give him away. And when you think Boca Juniors' most expensive signing ever, I think it's about 10 or 11 million pounds. You know, how are, how are they going to sign Lucas Torreira? Because Arsenal won't want to just lose him for half of his price and they probably won't want to send him out on loan again it's not ideal when they need money in to help fund bringing players in so it's a difficult situation for Lucas and uh, I'm sure it's one that's going to run and run as we get closer to summer to uh, work out exactly what is going to happen with him uh, right okay before I go a little bit on uh, the, the usual sort of team news Arsenal um, not going too deep into what they think the um uh, chances of the injured players coming back. Obviously, we know Kieran Tierney is looking certainly likely. He will not be featuring against Slavia Prague at the weekend with that oh, Thursday night. Sorry, with that knee injury. The rest of the players who missed out, Arsenal are just saying at the moment they are still being assessed. We should get a proper 
bulletin from the club tomorrow before the press conference. Obviously, we will then be able to ask some questions to Mikel Arteta to get a little bit more about it on Wednesday. But for now, they're just saying they'll be an assessor. So that's Granit Xhaka, Emil Smith-Rowe and uh, Bukayo Saka. Bukayo Saka we saw was training last week before the game against Liverpool. So you would hope he is further along the line than the rest of them and will have an opportunity to play on Thursday night. Um, the other two, we're not sure. I mean, Xhaka was ill. We didn't know exactly what was, you know, what sort of illness it was. Obviously, it didn't sound like it was COVID. There was no issue. Um, if it was COVID, it probably would have come out by now that it was. So hopefully it was just a bit of a I know, stomach upset, something like that. A bit of a cold, heavy cold, which has kept Xhaka out of the game against Liverpool. And he will be back for Thursday night's game because it's pretty clear, no matter how what you feel about Granit Xhaka, when he doesn't play Arsenal, do miss him. He's a very, very important player in that midfield for Arsenal. Um, you would expect he will be back. Like I said, you would expect Saka will be back and they've just given him a few more days to get over that hamstring injury. Smith Rowe wasn't training last week, so he's obviously a little bit further behind Saka in terms of his recovery from the hip injury that saw him miss the final game of England's under-21s tournament uh, last week. And I think also you need to you need both of those players in the team. During that chat that I spoke about earlier with Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher, they put up the stats of what how Arsenal have been with and without Smith Rowe and Saka and the difference is massive in terms of since Christmas points gained games won goals scored chances created it's huge with those two in the team Arsenal was so much better than when they're not um, and I think we all saw that against Liverpool the proof was in front of our eyes with that really inept poor performance going forward all right everyone thank you very much for your time as always thank you for watching please do let me know what you thought of this topics that I discussed in this video put them down there in the comments below and as I said press conference tomorrow afternoon with Mikel Arteta I will try and come on and do a live um, stream on here after that reacting to what has been said and also taking some of your questions uh, ahead of that game against Slavia Prague on Thursday until then everyone have a very good day enjoy the sunshine out there and I'll speak to you very very soon